Hello, I'm Jay. And I'm Dan. And this is our full ship tour of Ambassador's first ship, Ambience. We're going to start our tour on Deck 2, the wellness deck, and this is where you'll find the Green Sea Spa. Here you'll find a fully equipped fitness gym, a salon and a rather lovely thermal suite which includes orthopaedic beds, sauna and a steam room. Prices are very reasonable for cruise ship standards as an example they offer 60 minutes worth of treatment time for just £64. Any seasoned cruiser will know that this is a bargain. Moving up to deck 5, you'll come across the beautiful decorated centre court. Spanning three decks and decorated in fresh, vibrant colours, this really is the heart of the ship. On deck 5 of the centre court, you'll find the reception desk, the future cruise desk and the destination experiences, where you can book all of your shore excursions at a very reasonable price. You'll also find a small Pandora shop, selling a decent range of Pandora jewellery at duty free prices. Across the centre court, you can wet your whistle at Dickens, just one of the bars here in the centre court. On deck 6 of the centre court, you'll find the shopping galleria on the port side, which includes a fashion and accessory store. Like all prices on board Ambience, items in all the stores are very fair and get a big thumbs up from us. Remaining on deck 6 on the starboard side of the centre court, you'll find the rather small Ambassador Casino. There's a handful of slot machines and a couple of blackjack tables. This is one of the smallest casinos we've seen on a cruise ship. Near the aft of deck 6 you'll discover Aces and Eights, where you can play a variety of different board games including Scrabble, Trivial Pursuit, Monopoly and of course play cards. Next door you have Kapoor's, where you can cruise and craft. On sailings of six nights or more, you can learn a new skill here, such as jewellery making, painting, mosaic decoration, calligraphy and decorative card art. Materials will be supplied to you at small charge and you can take home whatever you make. We're now on deck seven aft and this is where the Buckingham restaurant is, the ship's main dining venue. Decorated in stunning art deco theme featuring comfortable seating, subtle lighting and serving delicious dishes from breakfast, lunch and dinner. This venue is included in your cruise fare and offers a pretty impressive menu catered to British tastes. If you have dietary requirements, simply make it known to your waiter and they'll endeavour to provide you with a menu catered to your dietary needs the following evening. Moving towards midship, you'll stumble across Raffles. This is a really classy bar where you can grab your favourite cocktail and listen to the talented music acts which play here. Like many of the bars on board Ambience, the seating is really comfortable and you can tell that real thought has gone into the decor of this lounge. Raffles has a living room feel to it and feels very homely, something you struggle to experience on a much larger ship. Next up is the Botanical Lounge. Situated midship on the promenade deck, the Botanical Lounge is decorated in such a way that you feel as though you're in a conservatory. The lounge and bar is scattered with plants and ornaments which really lifts the theme and character of this venue and the great artists that perform here make it a really great place to come on board Ambience. The only thing that is missing from this bar in our opinion is its own specials drink menu whereby they could have a handful of botanical cocktails which are unique to this bar on board. It would certainly add character to this venue and give passengers an added reason to try out this lounge for themselves. This is SW19, another great bar on board Ambience which sits right at the top of the centre court atrium. The perfect place to sit and sip a cocktail and take in the atmosphere here in the heart of the ship. 
On deck 7 at the centre court, you'll also find the photo gallery on the port side where you can purchase photos taken by the ship's professional photographers. On the starboard side, you'll encounter some more shops, namely a perfumery, duty-free store and a port shop. All the way forward on deck 7, you'll find the Palladium Theatre. The Palladium Theatre spans deck 7 and 8 and is the main entertainment venue on board Ambience. By day, this venue plays host to guest speakers, questions with the captain and movies. And by night, you'll experience quality West End style shows, comedians and tribute acts. We liked the decor at this venue and the seats were really very comfortable. And as for the quality of entertainment, well, we were blown away. We're now on deck eight and this is where you'll find the library. But it's a library that's very deprived of books. A good way to give the appearance of a well-stocked library is open the books and leave them standing on the shelves. Trust me, nobody will ever notice. A rather more exciting and interesting guest area on Deck 8 is the Purple Turtle Pub. This venue has a really great and vibrant atmosphere and is open throughout the afternoon and evening and plays host to music acts, bingo and pub quizzes every day. We're now going to take the lifts to deck 11 aft, where you'll discover the two hot tubs on board Ambience. Staying aft but now on deck 12, this is where you'll discover the Borough Market restaurant, the buffet style dining venue on board Ambience. For a small ship, we were pleasantly surprised at the extensive variety and quality of the cuisine served here. You'll find individual counters serving Italian, British classics like fish and chips, Asian dishes and an entire counter just for vegans. No complaints about this venue at all, the decor is fresh and smart and the variety and standard of the food served here excelled all of our expectations. The buffet here was better than what we've had on much larger ships including Azura and Queen Elizabeth. Another dining venue housed in the borough market is Saffron, the speciality Indian restaurant on board Ambience. Charged at just £14.95 for a free course meal, Saffron serves beautiful starters and sides like authentic Indian pakoras, poppadoms and Bombay potatoes as well as freshly made curries cooked to order. Just tell the waiter how you'd like it and the chefs will get to work. Moving forward on deck 12 on the port side, you'll find the ice cream parlor where you can grab a cone and a couple of soft scoops. Mirrored on the starboard side, you'll find the Al Fresco grill where you can grab a hot dog, burger and chips while you're poolside. This venue is really handy if you've been in the pool and don't feel like drying off to go indoors. Next on our tour, we come across the pool area, which features the relaxation pool, or as I like to call it, a large bird bath. And next to it, you have the only swimming pool on board Ambience, comparable in size to the solitary pool you get on Virgin ships. So trust me when I say, you won't be doing too many lengths in this pool. The pool area is lined with incredibly comfortable sun loungers, much nicer than what you'd get on many of the mainstream cruise lines. With the cushion you're given on these beds, you could easily spend an entire day out here on one. At the forward end of deck 12, you'll find the coffee house, the venue to grab your coffee fix during the day. The coffee house serves speciality teas, speciality coffees and delicious hot chocolate from around 6am onwards. They also serve French style pastries and cakes to accompany your beverage. Sitting on the opposite side of the coffee house and across the stairwell, you'll find the other speciality restaurant on board, Sea and Grass. Sea and Grass is a steakhouse dining venue serving a variety of different steaks, seafood dishes and a handful of vegetarian options such as the goat's cheese mousse. Sea and Grass has a cover charge of £24.95 per person. 
We're now all the way forward on deck 14 at the observatory lounge. This is probably our favourite bar on board ambience. It was really spacious, featuring comfortable seating and you're provided with breathtaking views out over the seas ahead with 180 degrees panoramic windows that line the venue. And the drinks were pretty amazing too. And at £5 a cocktail, they're a bargain. The Observatory Lounge is a late night venue featuring DJs, tribute acts and guest singers and where you can come and dance late into the night. Also on Deck 14, located near Poolside, you have the big screen, which plays live sporting events as they happen and movies in the evening when the weather allows. You also have the wraparound running track here on Deck 14, which features brand new AstroTurf, making running a bit more comfortable. And lastly on our tour, you'll find an active fitness studio all the way aft, where you can do exercise classes including aerobics and where you can try your hand at table tennis. So that was our full ship tour of Ambience. Unfortunately, we weren't able to include the consulate bar, number 10 conference room, the partnership lounge and the active fitness studio as they were not ready at the time of filming. If you're someone that prefers the smaller and more classic design of ship, then Ambience may be the ship for you to try. The design and decor of her bars and lounges are really classy and elegant, although arguably a little mixed. There isn't much in the way of consistency when it comes to her decor, you have a stunning Art Deco style main restaurant, a fresh and vibrant centre court, some rather worn and tired carpets in the corridors and stairwells, and some of the most tacky lifts we've ever seen on a ship. The ship would have been so much better if Ambassador had put their stamp on her from the outset, rather than just keep everything as it was when she was Pacific Dawn. We'd much rather see new carpet in the corridors and stairwells, and maybe give her some lifts which match the class and elegance of other parts of ambience. The big problem for us is we came on a ship anticipating it would be an old ship with new interior and those expectations aren't unreasonable. When Fred Olsen and Morella add new ships to their fleet they fully refurbish them, it's pretty standard. But Ambassador have bought their first ship and they've done the bare minimum to it and that is going to bring a lot of disappointment to some people who have cruises booked on her and have the same expectations that we did. Pacific Dawn had extensive refurbishment to her bars and lounges in March 2017, which is why these areas are in such good condition. However, the carpets in the stairwells, lifts, cabins and the corridors were untouched in the 2017 refurbishment, and this is why parts of Ambience feel so incredibly tired and dated. Hopefully, Ambassador will plan to address these areas because they really do let the rest of the ship down. Ambience is a ship with a real homely feel to her and will certainly appeal to those that don't appreciate the floating cities operated by the larger cruise lines. Ambassador are offering some really exciting no-fly itineraries straight out of the UK at very fair prices. And believe us when we say, the dining on board, entertainment and the fairness of the onboard pricing is some of the best we've come across and gives us reason to sail on this ship again sometime in the future.